Well, we are officially in the season of giving as the holidays are full on. We've got a lot to talk about tonight and a special treat just for you. Roll it, Ed. you had a great Thanksgiving as uh, we talk about what's left in the holiday season. It's a great time to be alive as we're moving through the back end of some of these traumas we've dealt with this year. And a great way to make your, ear, your year special is to give. And George Bell is in studio with us to talk about 225 Gives. The second year we've been doing it. Of course, George is the president and CEO of the Capital Area United Way. How's it going, my friend? It's going well, Clay, and it's great to be here again, uh, especially uh, on this show because as you set it up so beautifully uh, this is the season of giving mm -hmm. and uh, there's no better way for our community to come together to help our uh, community at large than to support 225 Gives. So let's tell people <clears throat> what is 225 Gives if they've sure. not heard of it. Well first thing is uh, 225 Gives is a uh, day of giving that has been set aside for our community to support local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that's done, it's branded in, in uh, you know, other names in yeah. other markets, but yeah. uh, we chose the name 225 Gives because it represents our 225 uh, uh, area code uh, community, but mm -hmm. our 10 parish area. But the, the, the whole notion behind it is that uh, the first Tuesday following Thanksgiving, is the International Day of Giving. Right. And we felt that uh, coming out of uh, the pandemic last year, uh, it was just a devastating time yep. for nonprofits to raise, raise funds. Numerous uh, uh, fundraising events were canceled. Yeah. Uh, just was a difficult time. So you couldn't gather. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't gather, couldn't do the things that we, we are so accustomed to doing as, as uh, fundraising opportunities. So community leaders, uh, business leaders came together and said, look, let's do something that's, that's different, that's unique, uh, that's going to help our community uh, r rally to support our nonprofits. And uh, we, we took a page out of the, the uh, uh, Give NOLA yeah. in New Orleans and, and other communities and we said, we, we'll bring this to uh, our capital area. Now, fortunately, uh, you know, organizations like the Wilson, Huey and Angelina Wilson Foundation, uh, Baton Rouge Area Foundation yeah. all came together and said, look, uh, we believe Capital Area United Way can, can make this happen. So they came to us, gave us the opportunity to co-host it last year mm -hmm. uh, along with Baton Rouge Area Foundation. And last year's event was, was quite successful. Yeah. We raised over $2.8 million, right. uh, had over 204 uh, local nonprofits that participated in that uh, uh, community-wide uh, giving. So if people yeah. wonder, okay, if I donate to this, where does the money go? How is it being used? How, how does that work? Certainly. So what makes it easy for donors to give is it's a, 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 a electronic platform mm -hmm. that they can go to, similar to going to uh, Amazon Prime yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, you can go to that platform and look up uh, all of the nonprofits that are participating. Like I said, over 200 are participating again this year. And um, they can find out about all of these nonprofits, look at their favorite ones, and mm -hmm. then make a choice uh, uh, to give to that, that nonprofit or any others right. and do it all in one transaction online. That's the ease of it. We had a couple of minutes. I wanted to get an update from you on how the area is doing. You know, we cover a 10, and I say we because I sit on the board of United Way, we cover a 10 parish area. How are we doing in the capital region post Ida and with the back end of the pandemic, at least as we know it for this year? How's it going? Well, you know, Clay, the pandemic really took its toll on our, on our community. Uh, we saw a dis disruption in, in many jobs mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, fields. And now coming out of the pandemic, we're still seeing a lingering effect of, of what a shutdown like that can do, not only to our communities, but to our country. I mean, the supply chain disruption that we've experienced has caused inflation. It's caused uh, just still a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty uh, in, in many sectors. So what we're finding is that uh, there's still 
needs that, that are uh, pretty prevalent in our community. And those needs were there before. The pandemic just exacerbated right. those needs. The other thing that happened was Ida. Yeah. Hurricane Ida was yet another disruption to our uh, recovery. And uh, we're, you know, we, we, our region was impacted by Hurricane Ida and we raised funds and, and really granted out over a million dollars of support. Well, uh, to help those. You're not leaving. We actually have a special treat for people watching the show tonight, so stick around. Uh, I want to talk about what's happening in the community from a different perspective, mentoring, community unity, and how do we get into next year better mentally than we were this year? Got a special guest who's got a great perspective, and you will hear him and see him next. Bishop Charles Wallace pastors the Oasis Christian Church here in Baton Rouge, right in the middle of the city. He is someone I've known for more than 20 years. And uh, Bishop, you are very involved in the community, not just as a pastor of a church, but you and I work together on a number of community initiatives. Uh, first of all, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great, Clay. And second of all, I've always known you to be an optimistic person. You never speak language of negativity. And you know, this is a time where people are reflecting on how their year has gone. People set resolutions for the new year. How are you advising people to be in the right mindset as they go into a new year? Well, good, Clay. Again, thank you for having me in the show. My pleasure. Well, this is what I tell people, Clay, because, you know, as we approach a new year, it's sort of a custom tradition that we begin to make resolution, you know, to encourage ourselves that things are going to be better in the year to come than the year that is past. What I tell people is put together a plan. Mm -hmm. I say a plan is greater than a resolution. <laughs> a resolution is something that you say that may last two days, three days, and it's over with. But when you put together a plan, it means that you strategically expect something different to happen. And I think moving forward, I think people will find that they'll have most success in their endeavors when they purposely plan, write it down, and pursue it. It'll come to pass more than just saying, uh, I'm going to lose five pounds this year. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, the pandemic stopped so many gatherings starting in March and, and all the way through this year. It's, it's not been the same. How have you been able to adjust and pastor your church with the, with the impact of the coronavirus? Well, Clay, uh, believe it or not, 
at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, our church was only out for eight weeks. Wow. We've been up and functional ever since then. Now, of course, we put all of the CDC guidelines in place, and we still do to this day. But every area of our ministry is a full functional ministry. And uh, I thought that was necessary to mm-hmm. get people back involved because when you get a gap, you're thinking about your life because you see the people that are sick and dying. I thought that to keep us together with that spiritual contact would help all of us moving forward. And so we've been able to bring everybody back uh, with safety and uh, we're moving forward and things are really going great. We haven't had any challenges at our church. We've had people sick and die, but overall we have been able to move forward as a church. You know, it's interesting because we've seen an increased number in uh, violent crime, uh, domestic violence, drug overdoses, all because of the the mental trauma people are dealing with. Because there's so much pressure, you know, George Floyd, everything that's happened that pulls you into this this frenetic pressure, you know, pace. How are you encouraging people through that? Because it's been tough, especially for children, too. Yeah. Well, well, certainly, Clay, as we look globally, but in our country and even in our community, we can see the stress and the strain from COVID and all of the other ills that we deal with on a regular basis. And when people come to the local church, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist, but I have to really put together messages and teaching that could encourage and inspire people. But also, Clay, uh, let people know that they need more sometimes than a song and a sermon. Right. You need mental help, you need professionals, you need medication. And we try to encourage people in all of those areas as well to cope with all of the different things that's happening. See, I think it's, it's amazing that even as, as a minister and as a pastor, you also encourage getting mental help for mental health issues, because there's such a stigma, especially in African-American communities, about yeah. going to see a therapist. Yeah. How do we break down those walls? Well, you know, this is what I tell people, Clay. As a pastor, it's my responsibility to help the people that God has entrusted me with. But it doesn't mean that I have to be the one to do it. Okay. I could refer them and recommend to them to other people. I think that's what we have to do. Uh, to get people the real help that they need. I know my lane, that's not my area, so I don't try to go there and and minister to somebody that's having some psychological issues. Right. If I recognize it, then I try to point them in the direction where they can get the help that they need. And there is a lot of help available, and then there are a lot of people that need the help. And you see more people are willing to talk openly about issues and encouraging others to do the same. Well, what happened is, Clay, and this is what I do as well. I believe, and this is just me saying this, not from any professional perspective, I just believe that everybody at some point in time deal with a level of depression. Sure. Uh, And I tell people that if you don't believe that you're depressed, it's probably because you're depressed. (laughs) Uh, you know, hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break and come back with Bishop Wallace continuing our conversation. And we'll talk about mentoring and unity in our community. Stay right there.
Bishop Wallace has been very involved in our community as he is a pastor of a church here, but even before then, you, you get the value of community and, and helping people. But we were going into break and you were talking about mental health and people being unafraid to ask for help. And you said, you know, chances are, if, if you don't think you've ever been depressed, you're probably depressed. Right. Um, you know, how do you get guys to, to get past that machismo and, and feel like it's okay to ask for help if you need help? Well, uh, Clay, as I was saying, that most people experience a level of degree of depression, mm -hmm. spiritually, naturally, sure. in every area. And so I share with them moments that I have in my own life okay. as a pastor. And it seems as though when I pray, my prayer ricochet. <laughs> it seems as though I'm not really getting through. Okay. And uh, the thing that I do to help me and... Uh, when people realize that people that lead them can be open and transparent about their own issues, then it makes them more willing to talk about theirs as well. Mm -hmm. Because everybody think theirs is unique and they try to hold back. But when they say, you know, pastor say that, you know, sometimes he have, you know, this happened or this happened or this happened. Now you got a dialogue. Right. Now you open up. And now people can receive the help that they need. You can't have a resolution without a confrontation. You got to address and confront what it is and not cover it up and bury it. Open it up, put right. it on the table, let's talk about it and then resolve it and move forward. There's been a lot of conversation about the divisions that, have, that exist around the country and even here in our community. Yeah. What's your perspective on how we can come together better as a community? Yeah. Well, you know, Clay, if we realize that we are better together, I need you, you need me. And when we work together, we can do so many great things. We have our own ideologies. We have our own, you know, background. But if we can put those things aside and look at each other as human, right? let's be human one toward the other. And, and realize that we can do great things if we work together. Uh, our country is full of division, it's very acidic mm -hmm. uh, in every area of society now. And it's gonna take people like us who believe in, in God, believe in our country, believe right. in one another. Right. And let's put all of these other things aside and let's work together. That's the will of God for all of us. I know that you are a goal-oriented person. Share with us a couple of your goals for 2022. Well, everything about my life is about trying to make life better for others. So when I think about anything and everything, I'm always thinking about what can I do to make life better for others. We're doing a lot of things as this year is passing. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of things. The year to come, I want to give young people more opportunities to just experience life, you know. Some of our children, after the pandemic and even now in our communities, they don't have access to the thing to help prosper their mind. Our seasoned citizens, <laughs> I don't call them senior citizens, I call them seasoned citizens. Right. I want them to live their best life now. I want us to be able to do things on a consistent basis to make their life as enjoyable as it can be for the rest of their life. Well, Bishop, you know you're welcome here anytime. Uh, yeah. you, you do so much in the community. Yeah. Always got a spot right here. Yeah, well, thank you, Clay. <laughs> and of course, you're very humble because you do a lot. You don't say a lot, but you do a lot, and we appreciate what you do as well. Thank you, sir. Now, we talked about the season of giving. We got a treat for you, and you'll see it next.
Well, we have a special treat for you today. He is a phenomenal talent, a great business guy. You just heard a little bit about him in segment one. Ladies and gentlemen, George Bell. There we go. My uh, music box. Was it on? Start it again. Off. Yeah, it timed <laughs> off. Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. Let's do it again. Start it again. Go ahead. All right. One, two, one, two, three, four. You know, the, talking about starting the segment with that music box, it's not like starting, a, it's not like falling off a ladder on live television. I saw that one time. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up this season, man. You know, you are able to do this, uh, this thing that has been a tradition in Baton Rouge and in downtown the last few Decembers that we skipped last year. George Bell and Friends Christmas concert is coming back next week. You missed it last year. Let's talk, talk a little bit about the concert. Well, Clay, this is the 10th anniversary of me doing concerts at the Manship Theater and the ninth anniversary of me doing the uh, holiday jazz performance. Um, it started out as, as humble beginnings as a, a, a kind of a, a thank you event when I was working for Baton Rouge General. And yeah. now it's become a, a two night uh, sold out performance. Uh, and, and it brings the community together. I've had so many people tell me that this has been such a, a, uh, a, a, an important uh, opportunity for them to kick off their holiday season. So uh, it really has taken on a life of its own, uh, but I enjoy it. I get to bring musicians uh, together and introduce some new musicians to the, uh, to the uh, Baton Rouge community. And it's just been wonderful, man. You know, it's, it's so interesting. Last year, because of the pandemic, you weren't able to do it. And you talked about yeah. how fast the tickets sold out this year. Yeah. People wanting to get out. It's, it's that thing people are saying, we really want to get back to some semblance of normalcy, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, um, I get it. You know, I, I too, uh, really missed the gathering of, of uh, friends and family. And, uh, you know, it, it just, you know, the pandemic really caused a lot of uh, isolation for a lot of people. So to be able to come back uh, this year uh, with two strong performances and um, I, can't, I can't tell you how delighted I am. And to also help other causes because we're doing, uh, this year is probably the fourth or fifth year that I'm bringing Sylvia Witherspoon in to yeah. help uh, promote her Sylvia's uh, Toys uh, right. nonprofit. And it's always, you know, it's always nice. Sylvia's a joy. He's going to bring your uh, your speaker back in and put it back over here so you could play us out as we 
wrap up. You got another one, uh, another one for us here. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you set it up, and uh, and it's one of my favorites anyway. So all right, uh, <laughs> I just. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are surprised that George Bell can, he's a musician, he can play. It's like, yeah, he can play. Well, I'm a, it's, a, it's been a lifelong passion of mine for uh, over 50 years, hard to believe. But uh, uh, I'm just glad to be able to still do it and that people still want to hear it. Will, yeah, <laughs> want to hear it. It's uh, one of those things that uh, uh, I don't take for granted. We got 30 seconds. Let's do it. All right. One, two. Three. 